This latest update, version 24.0, has brought many new features and changes to Agents of Warfare 2, including bug fixes, code optimizations, and combat reworks. In the past, we saw many bug fixes and optimization changes to the game's overall gameplay and performance, but none as extensive as this. Stone has worked hard for two months to bring these changes, and his labor has finally bared fruit. Stone has squashed many bugs and rewritten much of the game's code, so that our weapons can be bug-free and smoother to use. This update also brought new features to our weapons. The mace has been buffed, the ability to knock opponents over with the skill Long Lunge. So on top of his high damage attack, the skill will trip your opponents, allowing you to finish him off with ease. The short sword's Soaring Slice skill can also trip your opponents, as well as the axe. Currently found as a sidearm to the Viking Heavy Elite class, this weapon is an absolute powerhouse. It's throwable, recoverable, and a skill Soaring Chop can do upwards of 500 damage! For only 30 stamina, it's double the mace's cost of 15, but in return, does more damage in a single strike. This weapon has an M1 on par of the mace, and will definitely crack some skulls open. Range units equipped with shields such as Avelators and Dringers had shields that, in the past, acted as a larger hitbox. But in 24.0, their shields actually serve as normal shields that actually work and block projectiles. It can block any and all projectiles that do not have the piercing effect, and since it's a normal shield, it can block melee attacks too. Combat is an integral part in Ages of Warfare 2. The new combat system includes a complete overhaul of the hitbox system. Even in the high ping situations, the hitbox will more or less be relative to where an opponent is on your screen. And speaking of high ping, weapons will always work and be free to attack without delay. So no more ping related WTH moments, or hello to overseas servers. The weapons we players use have been completely rewritten, old bugs have been squashed, and new features have been added. For once, the sling's overhead mode finally works, allowing you to cash in on your two-point investment. It throws its balls harder and faster. An upgrade to the standard throw. Whole Arms' this update no longer locks you into an attack similar to how the Light Spear does, and instead allows the freedom of movement in your hero's attack. You can swing it like a club. Oh, I wonder how many people would abuse that. And the event bar on the top of the screen has been removed. Now, you can no longer see things like what killed you or who is aging up anymore, leaving unaware players in the dark until it's too late. Speaking of things removed, did you notice that the win timer was removed in the game? So no more waiting 600 seconds for the winning gem reward to be eligible to you after you joined an ongoing game. Yay! This update brought a complete revamp of the Adrenaline Rush system. Now it takes 40 stamina at once to load the weapon, so be it a slingshot, crossbow, or musket. You can now also regenerate stamina with the skill enabled and not in use. Examples of cases where you cannot regen stamina are loading and firing. Adrenaline Rush now takes a set amount of stamina for semi-automatic weapons. The weapons can include hands crossbow, the Lian Nu, and slingshot. Twenty four point zero brought new changes to how our troops are positioned in our formations. After some trusted advice from specific individuals, Stone has finally decided to implement this feature. Now the units are separated and located in their own distinct groups. The hierarchy is as follows: infantry in front, engineers and non-combatants behind, followed closely with range units, and finally the siege weapons. <laughs> 